Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Soundcheck. This time out, a mastering grade compressor from Dangerous Music. Let's get started. This is the Dangerous Music Dangerous Compressor, a stereo mastering grade compressor that offers pristine audio quality as well as a lot of control over shaping the dynamics of your tracks. The Dangerous Compressor can be used for tracking, for mixing, and for mastering. There's plenty of control on the front panel, but it's also very easy to use, and it has some great auto options that help you shape your sound without having to dig too far into the controls. Let's begin with a tour of the back panel. Hooking up the Dangerous Compressor is very easy. We have a stereo XLR inputs and outputs, and there also are trim controls for zeroing out the meters. Then the back panel also has two more XLR inputs and outputs, and these are used for external processing of the sidechain signal. The Dangerous Compressor is a true hardwire bypass unit. This means that when you're in bypass mode, none of the signal goes through the circuitry at all. It just goes direct from the input to the output. And in fact, you can turn the power off and it will still pass signal just fine. Now we'll move to the front panel and check out the controls. Beginning on the left side, we have the engage button. And this is our bypass button. When it's not lit, we're bypassed. And when that's lit, we're passing through the compressor circuitry. Next to this, we have four buttons that control the side chain. Now the side chain is the part of the signal that actually feeds into the compressor and controls its operation. We have two controls for shaping that operation. We have a bass cut. This is a very useful control because it reduces the amount of bass that's being fed into the detectors. This allows you to have a loud kick drum or a loud bass guitar and not have it affect the rest of the mix when you're having heavy compression applied. Below the bass cut, we have a sibilance boost. Now this provides a 2 dB boost in the high frequencies. And this is useful for taming harshness or for cutting down on sibilance in vocal tracks. The external sidechain button engages that external loop that we talked about on the back panel. You can insert an equalizer in there and make the compressor more sensitive to certain frequencies. This allows you to do frequency dependent compression, control sibilance, control bass, control a mid-range frequency that might be ringing say in a snare drum or something like that. Finally we have the sidechain monitor. This allows you to listen to what's actually being fed through the sidechain so you can determine what frequencies you need to equalize using that external path. Next up we have three contour switches. These switches are very important to the operation of the dangerous compressor and actually they make it much easier to use. Now most compressors have a single stage detector and this makes them respond to fast transients differently than they do to slower transients. With the smart dynamic switch engaged we actually have a two stage detector in the dangerous compressor and this makes it respond much more smoothly to different transients that are in the program material. Next up we have the soft knee switch. When that's bypassed we're in hard knee operation which means that the compressor will clamp down immediately as soon as the signal crosses the threshold. When we turn on soft knee, we have much smoother onset of compression. It can give you a little bit gentler compression response out of the unit. The final contour switch determines whether we have automatic attack and release control settings or we're using manual settings. When that's disengaged, we have automatic attack and release times set, and those are 30 milliseconds each. And that's a good general setting that works on most program materials. You'll rarely have to actually change that. But if you do want to set the attack and release manually, just engage it, and then we have control over attack and release right over here. The next three switches control the operation of the meters. The VU comp meter is on top. When it's in VU position, we're measuring the input and the output. When it's in comp, we're looking at gain reduction. When we are in VU setting for the meter, we have a selection for either looking at the input or the output levels. If we're running hot signals into the dangerous compressor, you can also engage the minus six VU switch, which will reduce the meters and prevent them from pinning. Our next switch is the stereo switch, and this determines whether we're in dual mono or stereo operation. When it's off, we're in dual mono, which means we have two completely independent signal paths. We could run a bass through this side and a kick drum through the other side, or a kick and a snare, and each would have their own compression controls. When we're in stereo, the two channels are linked, but we still have independent detectors. That allows us to maintain a very stable stereo image when we're operating in stereo. On the right-hand side of the dangerous compressor, we have the actual compression controls. First up is the ratio controls, and this ranges from 1 to 1 to 20 to 1, so it basically takes us to limiting. And we have some very subtle settings here. We have 1 to 1, 1 1.4 to 1, 1 1.7 to 1, and 2 to 1, and those allow us to do very gentle compression when we're working on a stereo mix. We also have 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, and as I mentioned, 20 to 1. Now, when you're operating in stereo, you still need to set these manually, so the ratio is not controlled by the stereo linking. Next up we have the gain control which allows us to make up for any level that's lost during compression. And when you're operating in stereo, the top knob controls the gain for both channels. Next up we have the threshold control which sets the level at which compression becomes active. And again, the top control controls both the channels when we're in stereo linked mode. When we're set for manual attack and release, the green LED comes on letting us know that these controls are active. We have an attack and a release control for each channel and those are still operational when we're in stereo. So if you need to adjust the release differently because you have something happening in one channel or the other, you can do that right here using these controls. Now like all dangerous music gear, the dangerous compressor is incredibly transparent. And in this case, that means that you can apply a lot of compression to your signals and really not hear it. You can be cranking down 10 dB and really not even hear that affecting your signal quality at all. 
Let's begin by listening to a stereo mix. I've got bass, percussion, and piano in this track. We'll set it up for Smart Dynamics to respond uh, smoothly to this, and I'm going to leave it set for uh, auto attack and release. I've got it set for a 3 to 1 ratio, so when we run that through... some of those levels by as much as 7 dB, yet it's really not audible in the track at all. Having that auto attack and release makes it so easy to set up, and we get a smooth response because of that dual stage detector that we control with the Smart Dynamics switch. Even if we increase the ratio higher than that, it still remains very transparent. So I'll set it up for 4 to 1, and then I'll move it to 6 to 1. Even with that extreme amount of compression, you can hear that it's still a very transparent signal path. It's really squashing down, crushing those transients down, yet at the same time, it's really not too audible. It's a very transparent unit. As I mentioned, we can also use a dangerous compressor in dual mono. And in this case, I've routed the bass guitar through the first channel, and then our cajon is going through the second channel. So if we solo our bass here in Studio One, In this case, I'm using the compressor to fatten up the signal a bit, to smooth down that attract transient, give us a little bit smoother response. We're not crushing it too much, but this is a very versatile tool for shaping the sound of that bass. Now let's listen to the other channel where I've routed the cajon. I've got it set up for a long attack, and this is going to increase the snap in the attack as the uh, hand is actually striking the drum. I've got a little bit longer release time set there, and that's going to tame a little bit of the low end for us. So let's listen to that engage, and then I'll bypass it for you. You can hear that that longer attack time is letting the actual snap of the hand hitting the drum come through, giving us a little bit more percussive transient on there, a little bit more clarity, and it's pushing the rest of the signal down a little bit, so it's actually reducing the level and clamping on that bottom end just a little bit for us. Now if we turn the attack time down, we're going to pull that transient down and smooth out the sound. So we'll set that down to its shortest setting. So you can hear how that's changing the sound. It's smoothing out that attack transient a little bit. It's also bringing up the reverb a little bit in the room, so you're hearing a little bit more ambience in there. So again, a very useful tool for shaping the sound of your tracks. The Dangerous Compressor really is a versatile instrument for your studio. You can use it on individual tracks, as we talked about there, for both shaping the dynamics as well as shaping the frequency response. When you put it on the mix bus, it's great for gluing everything together and giving it cohesiveness, and of course also for maximizing level and for controlling dynamics. When you're tracking, it makes a great safety limiter. It's also great for shaping the sound. If you have too much sibilance, you can engage that sibilance boost in the side chain. You can use an equalizer in the external side chain. So, so many ways that you can process your signal using the dangerous compressor. It is totally transparent in its operation, and it's very easy to use as well. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the dangerous music, dangerous compressor. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.